everybody welcome um today's case um is the case of a little girl named conray dixon and i really hope i'm saying that name right i mean no disrespect if i'm wrong um she was 11 year old little girl from ridgefield ohio um she at a young age was removed from her parents care due to heroin addiction um at that time, you know, over the next time period, she was um, kind of bounced around, placed in different family members' care. Uh, she was with her aunt um, right before she ended up going into foster care, and the aunt just couldn't handle her because of her behavioral um, issues. She had anger problems and um, just getting into some trouble, so... At that time, 2004, poor little Conray was placed into foster care, which we all know is just can be a it can be a great thing, but also can go really bad. And in the, unfortunately, in this case, it did. Um, in 2004, she was placed in the care of Paul Efall and his wife from Willard, Ohio. And she moved in with them at that time in their Willard home. Um, she also had a brother in the house, a foster brother. Um, on this day, October 18th, 2004, Conray and her foster brother were told to go out and rake some leaves. And so they were out there doing that as they were told. And apparently Paul had been out working in the barn that day on the back of the property and um, had stepped out of the barn to see Conray push her brother. And I guess this infuriated Paul and um, the little girl goes into the barn at that time with Paul. Uh, a struggle breaks out between the two of them and for whatever reason, uh, Paul reports that um, he's seen that she was holding something behind her back. And it, when he asks, what do you have behind your back? She pulls out a knife and comes at him and attacks him. Why she would be just carrying a knife while she's raking leaves, I, I don't know. It's ridiculous. So... He claims in this struggle, um, he's trying to get the knife away from her and she cuts him in the arm pretty badly and he uh, wrestles the knife away from her and by accident and self-defense, but by accident, he stabs her, this little 11-year-old girl, in the chest five times by accident. Um, so at this time, um, the little brother comes into the barn. He hears the struggle going on and he is told to call 911. So this is what he does. And I really wish I had this 911 call to play for you, but I could not find it. Um, I could just read about it. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit. So he calls and he, um, describes that his dad and his foster sister, um, who he initially says was four and then changed uh, her age to 11, um, ended up getting into a struggle and that the sister was attacking his dad. Um, the dispatcher goes on to ask him some more questions, trying to get information. You know, do you need an ambulance? And he said, yeah, my dad is hurt and I see blood on my sister. So, you know, um, he's, he stays on the phone call with her and she's trying to get as much information as possible and nine minutes and I think 34 seconds go by before the police actually arrive. Um, now the police department was only about a mile away. So why it took so long in Little Monroeville, um, I'm quite sure they didn't have anything more important that day or ever um, go on but anyway take some nine minutes to get there meanwhile poor little sweet um, Conray is laying on this filthy floor of this barn 
with five stab wounds in her chest um, and she is bleeding out and when police arrive um, and paramedics they determine that um, she was dead on arrival that she um, it later came out that she probably bled out in a matter of two to three minutes because when he stabbed her he directly hit her heart um, and so after this, um, you know, they immediately arrest Paul E. Fall for uh, the murder. They take him down. They start interviewing him. And right away, he is claiming that, you know, this was an accident. He was in a daze. He was just trying to get the knife away from her. And um, he was just defending himself, and which is a load of horse shit. Um, you don't accidentally stab somebody um, five times in the chest, uh, let alone an 11-year-old girl. I don't care if she has anger issues. I don't care anything. You don't, you don't do that. So this hunk of crap, um, to give you a little bit of a background on where this all went wrong, um, they had applied for, Paul and his wife had applied for, um, to be foster parents and had submitted their application and it didn't take very long and they were approved, um, getting their first child, which was Conray. Um, where they went wrong was D, um, DFS, Huron County DFS, failed to notice that, you know, if they would have just looked a little deeper into his uh, record, they would have noticed that he had a prior case with them um, of child abuse and essay on a child. Um, now, I couldn't find anywhere where it said that this was um, substantiated or not, um, but just the fact that you know, a case had been filed on him. He should have never, ever, ever had his own kids or a foster child in his care, ever. But he did. So that was um, a huge ball that got dropped, which happens way too often. I don't know if they're overworked. I, I really don't care. It just, I know it happens a lot. It happens too much, and these kids die because of it. So, Efal goes to trial, and this is just absolutely disgusting to me. This man only gets three years in prison. He is charged with involuntary manslaughter of killing and murdering this 11-year-old little girl. It's just a complete outrage. It's disgusting. It you know, I, especially with his history, um, why did this happen? It shouldn't have happened, um, but it did. And um, where his wife plays into this whole thing, I, you know, I couldn't even find her name. So I don't think that she had any part in it. Um, I didn't read where she was involved in <clears throat> the um, original DFS case uh, accusing child abuse. Um, now on the stand, uh, you know, they put him up there and he, he denied all this, you know, of course. They even put his child on the stand, his own child, that um, the DFS case was about earlier and this child on the stand denied any abuse any um anything from his dad he took his dad's side and stood up for him um whether he's telling the truth or you know he just loves his dad who knows but um and that is um the story that i have for you today i know it's extremely short but um, I just was blown away at this case because the short amount of time that he sat in prison for, you know, and did he really even do three years? Probably not. I d highly doubt it. Hopefully he got the hell beat out of him while he was there. 
hopefully he was treated like crap. Um, and hopefully, um, you know, he never gets his hands on another foster child, um, again, or, you know, <clears throat> we can only pray that he was cured. I, I don't know. Um, so that is all I have for you on today's case. And I thank you for watching again, and I will see you on the next episode. Thanks. Bye. Mm -hmm.